Right, life really comes at you fast, doesn't it? Because about two, three hours ago, I was in the studio with the big dog, Josh Aveste. We previewed the Inter Milan match that will be taking place at Stamford Bridge on Sunday. And we also did an episode of Chelsea Transfer News, which I'm still going to drop, by the way. That's going to land tomorrow, but I'm going to get this one out right now because Chelsea... I've pulled it out of the bag, completely out of nowhere, and signed Pedro Neto. This has come completely out of the blue. We knew that Chelsea were in for a winger, but we hadn't even really been linked with Pedro Neto, have we? But I'll tell you what, to quote Harry Redknapp, terrific little player. I absolutely love this signing. And do you know what? No later than five minutes into my drive home from the studio, the news broke straight away. And I thought, you know what? It's probably another one of these stories that's not going to come to fruition. But guess what? It is. Chelsea will pay £51.4 million up front with 2.6 in add-ons. And as I say... I love this deal, man. I really, really like it. When I've watched Pedro Neto, I've always been massively impressed. I saw him live at Stamford Bridge this season and he was ripping it up. I think he's going to be absolutely quality for Chelsea. So let's speak about it. I will get in the studio with Josh and we'll speak about it in a lot more detail. But for now, my initial thoughts on this deal. 24 years old, turning 25 before the end of the season. And not only that... He's Premier League proven. So the age is good for me. I don't want to see the wonder kids every two seconds. We're never going to see play for Chelsea. And we're literally buying them in to sell them on um, whatever. I don't want to see all that. I'm not bothered in that. I want to see players that are ready for the here and now to come into the starting lineup for Chelsea Football Club. And in Pedro Neto, we have just gone and got ourselves that. He's got about 100, maybe 100 or more Premier League appearances for Wolves. People are looking at the numbers. I've seen a few people try on a banter already on the internet going, oh yeah, you look at the goals and assists. Mate, he's playing for Wolves, right? And Wolves are a decent team. And without VAR, they probably would have got some form of European football last season. They did the double over us. But at the same time, he is not going to be playing at Wolves with players as good as Cole Palmer, as Christopher Nkunku. Uh, oh, mate, the, the quality that he's going to be playing with now and linking up with speaks for itself. He's consistently played for the Portuguese national team from under 17 level all the way up until this summer's Euros. And I spoke about the fact I watched him live at Stamford Bridge last season, right? He was ripping us up at points. And he is one of those players that gets you out of your seat. He's one of those players that you think, oh my God, this boy can do a bit of everything, can't he? comfortable and confident in taking men on, which Enzo Maresca is going to absolutely love. At the same time as that, he's a good crosser of the ball, intricate passes. He ranks high in the old metric for one-twos when uh, in the attack, right? And when you think of him, he could be linking up, let's say, for example, with Cole Palmer. Remember that goal that Carne Chukomeka scored, funny enough, against Enzo Maresca's Leicester side in the cup? That little one-two in the build-up will see stuff like that coming from Pedro Neto. And also, by the way, one man who he may be replacing, and I'm not going to be too smug about this, but... I'm not really bothered if he does replace him. We see the back of him now. Mikhailo Mudrik. Mikhailo Mudrik was apparently the fastest player in the Premier League, wasn't he? That's what I got told. But Pedro Neto is apparently faster. Well, according to the internet, at least, he's faster. So, mate, when he links up with the likes of Jackson, of Cole Palmer, Nkunku, Madueke, potentially, even Sterling, who looks like he's going to stick about, I don't know. I don't know, man. But on the eye test... This fella has the X factor, doesn't he? And not only that, do you know one of the reasons I used to love William? Because he chose Chelsea over Spurs. And that is what Pedro Neto has just done. He's chosen to come to Chelsea instead of going to Three Point Lane. And I absolutely love that. Absolutely love it. Now, he has had injury issues. There's no denying it. He missed a whole season at one point, didn't he? He's obviously had hamstring injuries over the last few seasons. Um, so that's maybe a little bit of a negative. Also, a lot of people are saying, well, he plays on the right-hand side. So cuts in on the left foot, off the right-hand side. That's what Cole Palmer already does. And I understand that. However... That may just be a factor of the personnel that Wolves had last season. Because if you look at his career as a whole, predominantly, he's played more games from left wing, right? And in this new system, I spoke about this. We've got these floating eights now, right? 
I very much think that we might see Cole Palmer in one of them positions rather than seeing Cole Palmer on the right-hand side like we predominantly did last season. So you could imagine maybe, for example, in Kunku, Cole Palmer as those sort of floating eights. You've got Lavia and Caicedo, maybe even Enzo Fernandez in there. And then imagine now on one wing, you've got Pedro Neto. And then on the other side, you could have Madueke. You could still have Cole Palmer in there, you know. I wouldn't be surprised to see Pedro Neto on the left-hand side, Cole Palmer on the right-hand side, and then as the two floating eights, having Nkunku in there with a, a more defensively-minded player. It would have been Conor Gallagher, probably. It will probably be Caicedo, someone that can drop back and get back in attack. But i tell you what, this one came out of nowhere. The Cole Palmer one came out of nowhere. And look how that ended up. I think if he stays fit and available, Pedro Neto will rip it up for Chelsea next season. Now, there will possibly be a domino effect here, won't there, you know? Raheem Sterling's looks really, really good in pre-season, and if his attitude's good and he's not going to kick up a fuss at the fact that he might not be a first-team starter, I think Raheem Sterling can be a really, really important player for Chelsea off of the bench next season. Um, obviously, Mikhailo Mudrik, how far down the pecking order is he now? God knows, but he's got to be quite far down that pecking order. Um, I'd start... On the left-hand side, Sterling over him. I would start, obviously, Pedro Neto over him. I'd start Nkunku over him on the left-hand side, even though I feel Nkunku's better more centrally. Probably start, start Tyreek George over Mudrik at the minute, to be honest. Josh ain't going to like it, but I think this spells the end for Mudrik. Would you lot agree with me? I think it does. I don't know. All I do know is we've got to get a lot of players out now over the summer um, because we have got such a big squad now. So... It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. We have bought ourselves a real gem here. I'm telling you now, I've seen this boy live. I've watched him. I've watched a fair bit of Wolves because I came in for a lot of stick when I said that Wolves could be a dark horse for relegation last season. And obviously, as soon as they started playing well, I started watching a lot more of them. And Pedro Neto is a player, man. He is a player. And you know the way the other day, Chelsea fans, I'm guessing you watched pre-season, when you saw Nkunku do that run through against Club America, took like four men out of the game, took it past them. Pedro Neto does that sort of thing week in, week out, mate. He is going to be cooking. Now imagine this. Just imagine it. Imagine this mental little loan deal does come off for Victor Osman. There's a domino effect, isn't there? Because Napoli want Lukaku. If they can get him in and this little loan deal or even a potential buy comes off for Victor Osman, you could have him up top. Pedro Neto one side of him. And Kunku just off the back of him. Cole Palmer to the right-hand side. Little bit of Lavia and Caicedo in there. Kukure at the back. Reach to oh, my God. It's getting ridiculous. I'll tell you what. If Enzo Maresca proves himself to be a decent Premier League manager, I'm putting it out there now. Chelsea are qualifying for the Champions League next season and we're winning the Conference League. I'm absolutely buzzing. Do not tell me I'm going over the top because if you're a watcher of this channel, you know I go over the top and I don't care. It's so mad because we did this video, me and Josh, earlier and we're talking about the transfers and obviously it was a little bit downbeat. We're talking about Samu, the new boy, who we're obviously bringing in. That's not had the here we go yet. I don't think the £35 million striker who's obviously being brought in from Atletico Madrid... That is a signing I'm relatively excited about. But let's be honest, I'm not that excited because I haven't even watched much of him. Whereas Pedro Neto, I watch week in, week out. And I'm really excited about this one. So that video that you now get tomorrow, I'm going to put this one out straight away. Even though I've posted an Inter Milan preview today, I don't care. We just get it up. You little watch it. You little like the video. Smash the like, by the way, right now if you're excited about this transfer. And even if you're not, still smash it. But that was a little bit downbeat because we spoke about Trevor Chalobah, we spoke about Conor Gallagher, we spoke about unproven players come in, but this is not that, right? So the narrative that's been going on in the media for the last few days is, oh, Chelsea buying these players just to sell them on, unproven, 18-year-olds that will never play, and you were probably right to run with that narrative. I was probably running with that narrative a couple of hours ago, but this signing is gives me hope. It actually gives me hope that the board, on some level, do understand what they're doing, okay? Because it's been a while since we've gone and got a proven, proven player. Like, when was the last proven player to come into Chelsea? Don't say Cole Palmer, because he hadn't even scored a Premier League goal. He made his name last season. He's absolutely brilliant, by the way, but when was the last time we signed someone proven? 
It's been a little while, hasn't it? And now I'm looking at things and I'm thinking, next season, yeah, we're going to have Nkunku, 25-odd years old. We're going to have uh, Jorgensen in goal, 25-odd years old. Pedro Neto, 24. These boys are coming of age a little bit now. Might have that experience. Oh, my God. Imagine if the Pedro Neto deal gets done in time for him to play against Inter Milan. Oh, it's my 30th birthday tomorrow, right? So I'm going to be having a few drinks. But I'll tell you what, I'll make you a lot of deal. If Pedro Neto is available to play against Inter Milan, I will go to the Chelsea Inter Milan match. Right, people, I'm just going to keep this one brief. I absolutely love this signing. I'm absolutely buzzing. Smash the like, smash the subscribe. I'm going to put this one out now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Am I going over the top or have Chelsea just really, really upgraded that left-hand side, which is where I think he's going to play? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. I will see you all in the next one.